So we did cover one over a chapter one over a two week period of first John. And this morning we'll be getting into chapter two, chapter two. Good morning, Jessica, Kiana, Dorothy, Linda, Jennifer, Gladys. And as we stated in chapter one, um, we're getting into <laughs> authenticating with biblical criteria our own personal relationship with him, not religious activity, not thinking just going to church and being in the building suffice doing a bunch of good deeds, working on a whole bunch of committees, no. But actually getting to know him. We're only going to go over verse one and two this morning because it's going to set the stage for the rest of it. And I said a little bit earlier, um, please go back and get the information for chapter one. We reviewed that over the last two weeks. So chapter two <clears throat> states, verse one, My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. If anyone sins, he has an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not ours only, but also for the whole world. And we're going to stop right there. We're going to stop right there. Because that is, um, that's loaded. That is so loaded. First John <clears throat> starts out, even in chapter one, as he's convincing the audience who's kind of being swayed and listening to other types of versions and twists of doctrine when it comes to the gospel in Jesus Christ. And he starts out by saying, hey, we are telling you what we have seen, heard, touched, interacted with, and nothing needs to be added to what we have said and what you originally believed. And so he's just going back now with a lot of wisdom. The apostle of love, formerly known as the son of thunder, with wisdom, he's going back and saying to them, you know, he calls them my little children, because he's coming in the state of an, an, an advisor, an elder, um, a big brother, um, a mentor, saying, hang on, hold on, listen to me now. Don't get this part twisted. And then he goes into the latter part of chapter one talking about this fellowship with one another and what that should look like. And I won't get into the depths of it. And, and also making very clear to them, sin. And, and, and you're a liar if you say you hadn't sinned, okay? And you're making, you're making a mockery of the cross because the cross is because we're sinners. It's, and it's so funny how the enemy uses that against us. You know, when we cut up and uh, become our own gods and act how we want to act, say how we want to say, and just, you know, whatever. And, and you know, deep down inside, you have that little thing that's saying, ah, don't do that. Mm, don't say it that way. But you just ignore it and the flesh takes over. You just do you, right? Then that, that little bit of <clears throat> thing that comes inside of you, or we call it conviction, and it makes you want to turn tail and run and not go to the Father at that very moment. That is such a trick of the enemy, because that's exactly where you go. He knows our flesh better than we do. 
That's exactly where you go. Why? Because such a wonderful, wonderful, eternal price was paid for what was said, thought, or done. Don't ever go the opposite way. Run right into his arms with your wrong. Because that's opposite of the way the world's function. And he says, my little children, so endearing, saying, listen to me, because you're not full grown yet. Let me get this meat down into your, your soul so that you can, you can start to grow and, and mature. Let me say something solid to you that'll stick to your bones in this small state, because as you grow up, you'll be a powerful adult. So listen to me, my little children. That is so, so endearing. These things I write to you so that you may not sin. Okay? Not so that you got to get out of jail free card. Because in 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Yes. But that doesn't mean you go ahead and say, oh, he got me, so I'm going to go ahead and do me. That's saying when your spirit and your flesh is in a battle, a battle, and we are not consistently walking in the spirit. I'm talking about for those who know him. And your walk takes a detour. Okay. He says, but I'm writing this so you will not sin. I'm telling you how to stay on the plane. I'm telling you what it looks like. But if you do, that's different than, oh, I know he got me, so I'm going to go and just go off the path and stay off for a little while. Mm-mm. He's not talking about the willing choice to sin. He's talking about when it just gets the better of you and you lose the fight in that moment. Okay. When your walk hasn't been as consistent and the enemy slips in and bops you off the path. When you get back on and start walking again and you confess Remember, we said confession is agreeing exactly with God about what happened. You're not putting any sugar on it. You're not patting it up. You know, you're not trying to make it look good. No, I lied. No, I did exactly what you are convicting me of. You agree. With God, it was wrong. You get back on your path. He says, my little children, these things are right so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, if the flesh gets the better of you that moment in the fight, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, whenever the word of God gives Jesus a name, Gives him a name. Put it in context of what is being said. If you were to imagine a, a, a court scene, and an advocate means it's the picture of um, friends running to the aid and pleading on behalf of their friend for the judge to rule in favor, an advocate, okay? Um, well known to us as an attorney. I'm gonna state the case for them. But in this situation, it says that our advocate, the one pleading our case, the one standing for our favor, the one putting his hand over us saying, wait, 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 wait. 
I got something to say about him. His name is Jesus Christ the righteous. You know how folks on TV get in trouble and they look for like the most popular attorney? Well, our attorney is Jesus Christ the righteous. Wow. That's his name. That, and he's free. He's free. He's not $5,000 an hour. This attorney is free when you believe in his power to fight your case and what he's done on behalf of his friends. We're not going to slide past verse one real fast this morning. We got to sit there a minute. Because this is spiritual weaponry one on one. In this, in this courtroom, an exchange is about to be made that the judge is well pleased with. Okay. Well pleased with this exchange that's going to be made. If you sin. That's not what God would have you do. But if you lose the flesh and spirit battle this day, this moment, it's not a place we get in and stay and start enjoying ourselves. But it's we, if we lose the flesh battle this time, he would rather us not sin But this day, if you step, get off of the walk, of walking in the spirit, walking with him, and you trip, he says, get back up. Because you got an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. I want that to ring in your soul. Just ring in your soul. It is the one thing that he enemy hates. Guilt does not belong to us. Condemnation does not belong to us. Conviction, yes. So that we can repent and get back in the walk. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. That's our attorney. That's our friend. That who that is a person running to our aid, pleading for our favor. Jesus Christ, the righteous. His track record is one hundred. Never lost a case. Jesus Christ, the righteous. This attorney is free. All you got to do is believe in his work. Jesus Christ, the righteous. In that court that we will be in all the days of our life. We have an advocate sitting right next to us. It's a fixed fight. Our mind just has to line up with the process of who we are. The, the accuser is in there. And guess what? Probably most of the time, for me, he ain't lying. I did it. Okay? I did it. There is a penalty for what I did. And he's not lying that day about me. I don't know. Maybe he lied about you, but he wasn't lying about me. The accuser was telling the truth that day, in that moment. I don't know, maybe he forgot what my attorney's name was, but it's Jesus Christ the righteous. Okay. And he, he was probably wondering that day in court, why was I smiling at him? Okay. Then verse two says, and he himself is the propitiation for our sin. Our advocate, 
our attorney, the one who has run to our aid to speak on our behalf, did something prior to the court case. He and the judge has fought many cases. And he already knew what the judge required because the judge hates sin. And the requirement, the penalty, and it will never change, is death. Okay. Because in that setting, in that courtroom of the kingdom, we're not talking about this world. We're talking about the kingdom. In that courtroom, in that setting, all sin has a price. The laws of that land was written by the judge himself. See, in that setting, it's not about humanity and what we want to rewrite for ourselves and our own truth and all of this other stuff. You've heard me talk about a creator. When you have been created, the creator has a purpose. A picture frame was created to hold a picture. A dolphin was created to swim in the ocean. A light was created to give brightness so we can see. This coffee cup was created to hold coffee. You are created by a creator and you have a purpose and it is not your own. A woman was created as a woman for a reason. A man was created as a man for a reason. Humanity was created for a reason. Isaiah 43, to give him glory. So the creator has a stake, ownership, his kingdom, and all that dwells in it. He set the law of the land. We broke it because we wanted to be independent in our own thinking and ways, okay? So the accuser comes to this kingdom courtroom and he is right. We are guilty. And if we close our eyes without ever meeting our advocate, whether you believe in it or not, belief or disbelief doesn't make it true or false. It is, regardless of our belief. And there will be a, a before death, a moment where resolve comes and you think, have I done this right? What will I answer for? And sometimes in that split second, if we still want to be our own, there's no time left. There's no time left. So while we still have time, while we still have time, we ask him into our hearts. So let me not digress because that's beautiful in my soul as well. We have an advocate in this kingdom courtroom. The accuser happens to be right. The judge has a penalty set in the law book. And he says, sin we don't tolerate. It has a penalty. But our advocate, call his name one more time, the one who's speaking on our behalf, Jesus Christ, the righteous. You know how attorneys have their name and they come across the TV. Ooh, they got so-and-so to fight their case. Ooh, they got so, you know, they over there speaking on their behalf. Quine Alex and all of that. Jesus Christ, the righteous. In the case, in the courtroom that decides eternal judgment when that time comes. And he himself is a propitiation of our sins. I don't know about y'all, but I have never seen a, a 
attorney on TV step into the situation and say, uh -uh, I got this one. How much they owe you? How much does the court say that this is going to cost them? Is it going to cost them some jail time? Uh uh, I'll sit in jail for them. Is, is the bond or the bail going to be $2 million? Here, I got it. Let me scratch you a check. I, I don't know, but I, I have not met one of those kind of attorneys on earth. What he got 20 years? Okay, let him go free. I'm going to go sit in jail for him. I want you to think about that. I, I got this 100%. No. But verse two says, and he himself is the propitiation of our sin. That word means he regained the favor of the judge by doing something. He pleased the judge with his action. And there's no earthly attorney that will do that for us. So whatever regains the favor of the courts, the judge, if it's a bill, if it's a bond, if it's a sentence, I'm sorry, but attorneys on earth, advocates on earth don't pay that for you. They don't do your jail time for you. They don't make bail for you. They don't make put the bond money for you. They don't stand up and say, judge, I'll take this one, put it on me, let them go free. Fine. That earthly attorney for me don't exist. But Jesus Christ, the righteous law firm, <laughs> with all of his angelic paralegals working for him, he is, not was, not will be, is present tense, the propitiation for our sins, that word meaning he regained the favor of the judge. He stepped up to the court and says, what will the penalty be? And the judge says, in this kingdom courtroom, it is always death. He says, Father, Little side conversation. I got it. The judge says, son, I know you do. I know you do. So the judge says, I'm going to call this one done. I'm satisfied. The kingdom courtroom is satisfied. The judge is satisfied. He is well pleased. And the accuser is standing over there going, uh-uh-uh. But you said if they did this, it was over for them. And they did it because, like I already said, in my courtroom, the accuser would be right. I did. Okay? This is what do you mean? He says, but in the courtroom, there's also a penalty for everything you're accusing them of. He says, I know it is. So why ain't you killed them yet? He says, but there is also a satisfying act for the penalty. Accuser and the advocate has paid it. He said, wait, 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 what you mean? He's made an exchange and I'm well pleased. He's given me his life and he's paid the price and paying, he is the propitiation for their sins. So shut your briefcase, turn your computer off, all your accusations and get out my courtroom because they free. They free. And we have to remember that. We have to burn that in our mind. There was a trade that happened. There was a kingdom penalty and a kingdom satisfaction, a favor it was paid. It was dealt with. There is no earthly attorney. There is no earthly advocate. There is no earthly friend that will plead your case and pay the penalty for you because they loved you. But there is one attorney. There is an advocate. 
Jesus Christ, the righteous, even his name is satisfying to the courts because he's without sin. I'm sitting over here guilty as all get out. All the charges is right. And my attorney walks in there with a track record without a blemish. Sits down, turn over to me and smile. You better start, go ahead and plan the party because you are already free. Go on, go on and call your friends with GMS and tell them you're ready for the party because y'all are already free. Because he made the judge. He went up there and regained his faith. He took over power of the entire courtroom and all the cases. Because he knew we could never pay the price. There wasn't a sentence long enough. There was not anything that was satisfying but one thing. And he says, Yana, that was already paid. And I guess the accuser forgot. His accusations are not false. They just don't hold any weight. But what I did holds all the weight. It is completely satisfying to the kingdom law. I, advocate for the accused, Jesus Christ the righteous being my name, has already satisfied their penalty. What say you, Your Honor? I say, well done, advocate. You're free to go. You're free to go. <laughs> then it says, and not for hours only, but also for the whole world. Jesus Christ, the righteous, as an advocate, what he did for the kingdom's court's penalties, he says, as a matter of fact, Your Honor, we got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of cases. But I love them so. Some of them won't even believe in what I do. I have paid the price for everyone. I have paid the price for everyone. They just have to walk into this courtroom and believe it's already won. Some will and some won't. But I've done it for all that you created, every human being. Me being the attorney, me being the advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous, I came in and satisfied this courtroom forever for everyone. That's how bad he is. That's how wonderful he is. That's how awesome he is. So I'm going to plead all these cases lined up to the end of time for all of your creation called mankind because I've done with ease the courts. I've shed my own blood. They just have to come in here and sit down next to me and believe I have never lost a case. Amen. Woo, that was good to me this morning. What say you, my beautiful people? Yes. Yes, Jessica. Yes, Linda. The kingdom courtroom. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good morning, Miss Gladys. Beautiful. Mm. Good morning to you. Our attorney. Yes, Linda. <laughs> the Jesus Christ lost for her. 
Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Jessica. Amen. Amen. That was just two verses. I hope you let that sink in. I hope you never deal with condemnation and guilt another day in your life. Let conviction do its work. And even if you hopped on late, yes, Kiana. Amen. Yes, Kiana. Yes. I see that request. Oh, my gosh. I'm happy for you. We will definitely be praying for you. We will definitely be praying for you. Ms. Linda, you see that prayer request? Yes. Oh, gosh, what, a, what an accomplishment. Graduating with a master's, going into a doctorate program. And anybody else that has a prayer request, you please post it there. So I pray that this devotion has blessed you this morning. Oh, my God. It has reminded and blessed me. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the righteous. In the name of Jesus Christ, the righteous. We want to thank you, dear God. Because we're not here to stand as if we are not accused and have not sinned. We're standing because we have done everything. Everything that has been put on this court Dock it for us. But our advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous, we want to thank you for his perfect work of satisfying the kingdom's courts on our behalf. Satisfied the sentence on our behalf. Because of love alone. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we make that exchange for everything He bought back for us to have our freedom, our peace, our joy, our redemption, our peace of mind, the healing in our bodies. He satisfied the penalty for everything we've done. He made an exchange with his life. So Father, may we never, ever, ever live beneath what that price brought back for us to have and reveal it to us. We have the victory, but live defeated out of ignorance and perishing because of a lack of knowledge. In the courtroom that matters the most, we've been granted our freedom. We've been stamped free to go. So we thank you for that kind of love. We thank you for Jesus Christ, the righteous. May our generations get that revelation and never let it go. May all of the accusers' lies and accusations and manipulations and deceptions, because he's angry, he couldn't make it stick. So everything he tries to do to trip us up after the verdict was rendered, innocent, free. I pray that you would just grab a hold to that manipulation. Put it in bondage. Take it far away from the mind. Your children. So that we could live in the peace of that freedom. Sever his lying tongue in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ the righteous. 
for us and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And if you feeling a little tugging, a little desire to surrender your life to Jesus Christ the righteous, to believe fully in what he's done, to dive into this love letter he's given all the time. Let him continue to draw you close. And I want to pray with you. And it's not the prayer that saves your soul. It's what you believe before you pray that saves your soul. And if you believe that his love is just for you, you believe he's the son of the father who paid the father's price, for sin, if you believe that that third person of the Trinity called the Holy Spirit, see, the Trinity is all God, different roles, just like I'm Cheryl. I'm one person sitting here, but I got a lot of different roles, nurse, wife, mother, friend, uh, minister, okay? One God, three different roles. The Father had a role, the Son, the Advocate has a role, and the Spirit has a role. So once you believe in that second person, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes now to be with you, to help you in your thinking, help you in this struggle, to be your comforter. He wants to fill you up. Okay? He wants to just immerse you in him. He wants the evidence of him being inside of you to come out of you. You look like, sound like, walk like, talk like, love like, be healed because he's whole and he's here to make us whole. If that's what you believe, now pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, Father. And I believe in your son's death on the cross for my sin. This is about me this morning, God. And I welcome your spirit into my heart. And I ask for forgiveness for all my sin. And some of it you may want to call my name because, God, I was wrong. I was rebellious, I was prideful, I was selfish. And I need the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ to take me over your spirit to live inside of me and fill me daily. In the name of Jesus, amen. And if that's you, now you are saved. Now you grow, you grow in your your salvation. You grow in your intimacy and your relationship. You learn the ways of the kingdom because they are unlike the world. And it's a journey to grow. It's a magnificent experience. So you come along and grow on just for my soul ministry. Amen. All righty, y'all. So today, opportunities you have to grow. Today, of course, was what we call prayer moments. Tonight, we will be back on. You can see a flyer with our conference call number right on this uh, Facebook page. You grab that conference call number, which is 617-617-793-8603. 617-793-8603. Tonight at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Um, so Wednesdays is our day for devotion and prayer. And second and third Saturdays, 9.30 a.m. Make that easy to remember. Second and third Saturdays, 9.30 a.m. The second Saturday, which will be this Saturday, is our monthly teaching. And on the third Saturdays, 9.30 a.m., is our 
book study, Overcoming Rejection by Frank King. And I don't have my book up here to show you, okay? <laughs> so join us at those times. Look forward to seeing you October the 8th and October the 15th, 9.30 a.m. Have a wonderful day. I love you just for my soul loves you. But most of all, God loves you. He is the lover of your soul. Bye-bye for now.